Hey everybody, this is my first time talking before a video actually starts. I'm going to kind of wing it, but I wanted to get on here and just say thank you for all the love and support that you've been giving me. Today's video is a four-part story, and this is part one, and I wanted to see if we could get 100 likes to unlock part two. I think you guys can do it, and I hope you enjoyed the story. And then, you're all set. I smiled. The young woman looked at me, hopefulness mixed with skepticism in her eyes. You're sure it'll work? She asked. It has never failed before. Just leave it near his bed, preferably under it, but make sure it is somewhere he won't look. Soon enough, he'll make up his mind. I smiled and handed her the jar. The grayish substance scalloped around in it and the lid was sealed with black wax. And the payment? Take your time. Okay, thank you. I mean it. She said as she put on her coat and started walking towards the front door. I know. I smiled. I watched her walk down the small path leading towards the town, the darkness making it harder and harder to see her. I don't mind helping out in situations like these, but I can't say I enjoy it either. It feels unnecessary. I think a lot of human agony is solvable through communication. However, a witch has to make a living, right? The night grew darker, my house chiller, and just as I lit a flame in my fireplace, I heard three knocks on my door. Not something I expected, yet nothing that surprised me. Many clients come to me without making an appointment. The door is unlocked. I said loudly. Three more knocks. It could be that they were unable to hear me, but that is rare. Most likely, it was someone who needed to be invited inside. Come in, I said, hastily stuffing a bundle of sage into my pocket. The door opened, and in the doorway stood a young man. His features were incredibly bland and reminded me of a sketch you might see in a human anatomy reference book for artists. Beautiful, yet unbearably generic. His hair was dripping wet. It wasn't raining. Can I help you? I inquired. He looked at me, a sad smile on his mouth. I'm lost. Well, where are you going? He shook his head. Not going, looking. Water was dripping from his hair onto my wooden floor, and I gently escorted him towards a chair near the fireplace. I positioned myself right across him, studying his face more closely. What are you looking for then? My wife. My daughter. I can't find them. His eyes turned pleading. Please, will you help me find them? A lost soul. I wasn't sure yet. I keep a log of all my encounters and I've gotten plenty of those visitors before. Usually, they need help realizing they are dead. The wet hair could indicate some sort of drowning accident, maybe involving his family. Maybe he… There was an accident. He looked at me, still smiling faintly. Were your wife and daughter in the accident? I asked. He nodded his pleading gaze turning towards the ground. Please, will you come help look for them? His eyes shot up at me, still pleading. Somehow, the gaze seemed even more intense now. Where have you looked for them? His eyes flashed. His sad smile trembled. I can't find them. Come with me. Help me look for them. The lights flickered instinctively. I reached into my pocket, my hand grabbing the sage. Where would you go to look for them? I inquired. A tear fell down his cheek, but his eyes still impaled me, and I could see the desperation in his smile as he tried to keep his composure. Please, I need you to come with me. He reached out his hand, and the lights flickered again. Come with me. Please, come with me. The desperation grew in his voice. His now bloodshot eyes stared right through me. And for the first time, I realized there was something different about his face. It was elongated, somehow skinnier. 
His eyes were sunken into his skull. His mouth was bigger, and his smile now stretched across his face. My fingers tightened around the bundle in my pocket. Please, Vera, come with me. The voice was now coming from all around me. The man trembled. I threw the sage into the fireplace. Get out, I yelled. The burning smell of the sage filled the room. The voice screamed. The man's jaw unhinged, and he grew taller as he sat there. His eyes sunk deeper into his skull before completely vanishing. His body was now long and skinny, his fingers bony. The lights went out. I could barely make him out in the light from the fireplace. Slowly, he got up from the chair and struggled towards the door, the long limbs seemingly making it awkward for him. You should have come, Vera, he whispered in a raspy voice before he stepped into the darkness. The lights returned. I took a deep breath and started mopping up the water on my floor. Where did he want to take me? It is evident that he needed me to come for some reason, but I couldn't figure out why. After reading through my journal, I realized two things. One, never has a lost soul needed to be invited in before, so I am not sure what creature I was dealing with last night. It is definitely not one I have encountered before. Two, he called me by my name, which I never told him, which I never tell any of these creatures. I might need to lay low for the time being.